Why is time uniform? I think time is uniform because nothing happened at the inception of the universe. There's my picture again. Total uniformity of absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing rolls over into being something and in my view inherits the uniformity from which it stems. Now I'm not saying that there's not something like a big bang and so on. I am saying that when absolutely nothing rolls over into being something, or apparently something, then the uniformity of the parent is inherited by the child. So since absolutely, uni absolutely nothing is uniform, I think that the, at the inception of space and time, and in particular of time, time becomes uniform. And so you have the conservation of energy. So if you don't do anything at the, at the inception of the universe, this is where indolence comes into it, you automatically have a law which says that energy is conserved. Um, I suppose one of the questions that might come to your mind is, you know, how much energy is there in the universe? Do we draw that uniform line there, or there, or there, or somewhere else? How can we measure the energy of the universe? Where do we put that line? Because once we've got whatever energy we've been given, we're stuck with it for all time. Well, you can measure the energy of the universe. What you do is you weigh a galaxy, okay, determine its mass, multiply its mass by c squared, E equals mc squared. So you've got the energy that is represented by that galaxy. Okay. And then you look at the universe and say, well, there's lots of galaxies, aren't there? So we do it for that one, and we get a certain energy. We measure, say, the mass of that galaxy, add it to the first, get more. Do it for this one, get more. Do it for that one, get more. And you can see that if we do it for every galaxy in the universe, we get a colossal energy. Okay. Where did it all come from? Well, scientists are um, circumspect folk or should be. And they say, well, have I really considered all the energy in the universe? And the answer is that at this stage, they haven't. Because when you have a gravitational attraction between two entities, in this case, two galaxies, because it's an attraction, it lowers the energy. So Oops, I went too so far. So it lowers the energy. And so what we've got to do is to go back to our original E and say, well, that galaxy attracts that galaxy. So this is reduced a bit. This galaxy attracts that galaxy. Add it, add it in. Uh, you can see where this argument is going. Currently, and this is speculation, I do not conceal that this is speculation. It looks as though if you do this for the interaction of every galaxy in the universe with every other galaxy, and you include dark matter, and you include dark energy, it looks as though that the total energy goes down and down to zero. So where do you draw this line? You draw it there. There is no energy in the universe. The question of asking where all the energy came from dissolves. Okay. That's, like, that's what science does. It, it looks around and says, OK, you're puzzled by big questions. Let's really look at the core of this question to see whether it really exists. And my suspicion is, I say this is speculation, that there is no energy so you don't have to account for where it all came from. 
For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.